So it's mailbag time again. What have we got this time? This is a review item from Manggood, so we'll see what that is, but uh, I don't know what the other stuff is. A small package. And lots of tape, of course there is. I purchased these from a recent repair I did. Well, because of a recent repair I did. I did like doing a cling wrap, don't I? For batteries. So, nickel metal hydride, 80 milliamp hours, 2.4 volt batteries. I don't actually have anything like this, so I thought I'd buy some because you never quite know when you're going to need them. Being rechargeable, you can just leave them sitting around for a while, you know, it's not too bad. You can just charge it up once in a while, they'll sit there just fine for years. And because I don't actually have anything like this, I thought it would be a good idea to get some. What was it, the HP 8165A, was it? Which had dead batteries on the front, and I bodged in a um, cordless phone battery. It worked fine. But I didn't have anything like this, so I thought I'd get some. Not too exciting. So there'll be links down below for anything I can give you links for. So there'll be links for those. Probably won't be links for these though. So these are some ICL 7650 14 pin dip package, as you can see. These are from RS. These aren't made anymore, so trying to get these is interesting. But RS had some stock, so I grabbed some. So these are the actual. Uh, it's an ICL 7650SCPDZ. That is the part number, and that's the order code. So I got these because of the Solitron 7061, which I own. I did an upgrade on it on a previous mailbag, I think I actually showed it. I changed the IC inside the unit, and it should be pin for pin compatible. But the following day, the unit failed, and it actually had some weird fault. It actually burnt a hole through the circuit board, and the chip just died. So I don't actually know what was going on there, it's a bit weird. Can't really explain why I did that. So I put the original part back in again once I fixed the carbonised hole in the board. This carbonised between two pins on the diodes which feed the plus and minus 15 volt rails are really close together and it carbonised directly between those two. Whether that's just a coincidence, I don't know, but it killed the chip. So I put the original one back in again and it's been fine. And I thought, right, well, if there's a risk of it blowing, I'd better get some more. And these are getting rare. So I bought some, right? So there's a couple of devices I've got which have these particular parts used in them. So the Solitron 7061 uses them, the Datron Calibrator uses them as well, I think. So now I've got a small stock of these, so at least if something does go wrong, I have some spares whilst you can get them. So if you need some of these, then I suggest you go to RS and buy some. Okay, these are comparisons. Now in my Solitron 7061, I was a bit concerned that the, the next device in the chain after that um, 7650s, the next device in the chain is a comparator, and it's an LM319, and that's what these are. So I thought well, I'll best get some spares in case it's been damaged. Never know. You know, you do get cascading failures, and I didn't actually have any, so it makes sense to get a few because I've seen these before in other bits of gear as well. I've never had to replace one yet. 535749. And these are 14-pin as well, I think. These are just like, just-in-case parts, really. These are just spares, just-in-case, whilst I can get them. Because these dip packages and stuff like that, they're getting rarer and rarer. You know, they're old technology now. Everything's moving on the surface mount. And so, if you find gear which has dip parts, for example, then you probably want to stock up on those parts when you think you may potentially need them in the future get them while you can because in five years they probably won't be around anymore obviously it means you could probably buy a whole bunch of parts you may never ever use but then maybe you could help someone else out one day you know you might be on the EV blog forum you see someone asking for a part for their device and you might say oh yeah I've got a half a dozen of them you can have one you know you can probably help someone else out in the future someone's done that with me in the past you know it's been really helpful and that was a fluke a842 a multimeter. The display was blown on mine. Now you happen to have a spare display. Well, that's a used part. It's not quite the same, but you get the idea, don't you? No. So these are just some um, resistors, stand through holes, and also SIP package ones as well. So 8 pin and 9 pin 10k arrays. And also, I'm not sure those are 180 ohms and something else. Just restocking bits and pieces. Now these resistor arrays I actually purchased from my Datron project. I haven't actually gone any further with that. You know, I've shown you many times. I mean, there's one module sitting there 
waiting to be used one day and a whole bunch of display and unseat assemblies and I mentioned it on EV Blog Forum but no one's really shown much interest in potentially getting them off me someday someone will need one and that's fine and I, they'll hopefully better find me and get one off me as well for that to use as these on that uh, original display driver board to replace the original resistor arrays so that's, that was for that and these were also for that actually if you think about it 180 ohms, 150 ohms, so these were for the LED digits to segment drives. Yeah, that's what those are for. Not exciting. Leave the links for these down below. I think I need to sharpen my round knife. I'm certainly struggling these days. Okay, small binding posts. Now I purchased a few different ones recently, different suppliers, that kind of thing, but they look very really similar. Let's check the quality out, see what they look like. Some are better than others. These are good ones. These look nice and robust. These are good quality ones. The same as the other ones, I think. They look exactly the same. So, different colours red, black, green in this case. Well, I've got a Solotron 7075. 7075. I'm going to sell. But I've only got one output cable which I need to keep for my existing Solotron, my 7061. But the 7075 has the same connector on it, and I've only got one cable. And if I try and set it without a cable, it's going to be worth less and it's a bit of a pain for whoever buys it. Because then they have to deal with trying to get a cable for it, which you can get them, but they're expensive, usually. Sort of talking about $150 or so. And I've got options there. I could either put some binding posts on it and just make it a standard binding post output, you know, 4mm jack, just like any other multimeter. Um, yes, I know these aren't high quality things. I mean, they're okay, but they're not like low leakage brilliant copper they're not those so you know these are just standard nickel coated brass so that's probably all these are probably good enough though to be honest the other option is I've got which I'm also waiting for is a different kind of connector which hasn't arrived yet so I'm not sure I'm going to get the binding post on the 7075 or swap the connector out for a different kind of round one so I can make another cable up for it so I'm not quite sure yet I'm not settled on that swapping the connector out will probably be better but I don't know we shall see I've ordered something we'll see if they turn up if they turn up, great, then I can sell that multimeter. I don't need it anymore. I've got a whole bunch of them now. Alright, last thing. I've definitely got to sharpen this thing up. It's upside down. Dave won't be impressed. So, this is a review item for Banggood. So, thank you much, Banggood, for sending this to me at no cost. You know, let me show you a little card. So, so this is for review. Now, I already have one of these things, kind of. Reason being, this is an upgraded version. So, I've got my existing desoldering gun right here. Okay, I've had, I purchased it myself ages ago. I think I purchased it, it might have been a review as well, actually. There's this dual pump version. I thought, well, let's have a look at it and give it a go. So, I will be doing a proper review video on this thing. I'll be trying it out, doing some desoldering with it, and doing comparisons with my existing one, that kind of thing. Let's have a little quick look at it and we'll see what we have. So we've got accessory backs, box here, which will be the stand and everything for it. The cleaning tools and the filters and here's the back of it. Look how meaty that thing is, two dual bumps. So it's the 220 volt version hopefully. <laughs> yes it is, 220 volt. They don't do a 240 volt version, I do 220. It's close enough. But it's very similar to the original one except it's got dual pumps instead of a single pump. Otherwise, I think electronically the control board is exactly the same. Now, there was a guy on the EV blog forum that posted a circuit diagram and stuff for it. Is it even in the manual? I'm not sure it might be in the manual. Where did he get it from, I wonder? No, it's not in the manual. So, yeah, so there is a circuit diagram available for this thing. So I'll be doing a review on this and give it a go because I'll be really happy with mine I've already got. It's, it's saved me so much work and it's been really, really convenient. I'm hoping that having the dual pump done will be a bit better because it might be more vacuum. In theory, it should be more vacuum. Is it really? Don't know. So yeah, it could be a better one. I've been really happy with my existing one. I thought I'd get another one. If this works just as well, I'll be happy. And then I can actually put one of these, probably put my old one, out in my other lab where my RF stuff is. So I've got a desoldering gun out there as well. So I've got one in both places, which would be really convenient. So that's all for this time. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like mailbag videos. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Click the bell icon. All that usual stuff. And I'll catch you around. Bye-bye.